Okay, we are going to look at rounding numbers. We're going to look at rounding numbers to the nearest 10 and rounding numbers to the nearest 100. Okay, so there's a couple of um, steps here that I look at every single time. Okay, and the first thing I do is I underline the digit we are rounding. So in this case it says round to the nearest 10 and I'm looking at the number 46. 46, nearest 10. Underline the digit we're rounding. So I'm going to underline the number in the tens place. Okay. Then number two, it says look at the number directly after the underline. So in this case, it's going to be the ones place. Okay. Now, if the number is zero, one, two, three, or four, we keep this digit the same. But guess what? It's not zero, one, two, three, or four. So I'm going to go down to the next rule. If the number after the underline is 5 through 9 or 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, we make the underline digit one more. So I had 4. This is 6. 6 is greater than 5. It's, so I'm going to make this number 5. And then everything that comes after the underline becomes 0. So I have one number after the underline. It becomes 0. So when I round... 46 to the nearest 10, I get 50. Okay. Let me look at the, another number, and I'm going to do it the exact same way. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to underline the digit we are rounding. So it says round to the nearest 10. So I'm going to underline the number in the tens place. And I'm going to look at the number. The next one says look at the number directly after the underline. So it comes directly after the underline, this number three. If the number after the underline is zero to four, keep this digit the same. And in this case it is. It's three. And well, one thing I like to say, I like to say high five. If it's five or more, we make this number go bigger. If it's less than five, we keep it the same. So it's two. Now we're going to skip step four because we found that it's it's not five to nine. Okay, it's not five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Then down here, everything after the underline becomes zero. Okay, so I look. If this number is five or more, five or greater, we make this bigger. If it's less than five, and in this case three is less than five, we keep the underline number the same, and everything becomes zero. This time we have 100 in here, 334. But it says round to the nearest 10 still. So we're still going to underline the digit we're rounding. And we're rounding to the tens place. So I'm going to underline the 10 because that's what it's telling me to. It's not telling me to round to the nearest 100. It's telling me to round to the nearest 10. And I am also going to look at the number directly after the underline. Okay, and if the number after the underline is 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, which it is, it's 4, it's less than 5, I'm going to keep this underline number the same. Now, everything that's before the underline stays the same too. So I have my 3, and since the number after the underline is less than 5, I keep it 3 too. Then everything after the underline becomes a zero. So when I take the number 334 and I round it to the nearest 10, it becomes 330. It's very, very important that you look at which digit, which um, place value they're having you round to. At this place point, it says the tens place. So we're not underlining the hundreds, we're underlining the ten because it says to round to the nearest ten. Okay. Now the next one, same thing. Round to the nearest ten. So I'm going to underline the tens place. Then when it says the number two, I'm going to look at the digit directly after the tens place. Now, like I said before, everything before the underline just stays the same. 
Now, since this number right here, 8, is 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, it's more than 5, I have to make the underlined number one more. 1 more than 7 is 8. And then I take everything after the underline, and it becomes a 0. So when I round 578 to the nearest 10, I underlined my 7. And since the number right after it, the ones place, was more than 5, 8 is greater than 5, I make this 7 an 8. And everything after it becomes a 0. It's 580. Let's try one more. I want to show you something a little different here. Okay. Now this says round to the nearest 10. That's what I normally do. I underline the number in my tens place. And like I said before, you can keep the number before the underline the same. Then I'm going to look at the number that comes after the underline, the ones place. Well, 6 is 5 or greater. Remember, high 5. If it's 5 or more, we move this number up. But guess what? If I make a number of this 9, one more is 10. I thought I was going to put a 10 to another 0. That doesn't make sense. So when this number is a 9, I have to make the number next to it one more. 7. And then that makes this a 0, and the number after the underline is a 0. So if I took 690 and added 10 to it, that would make this one um, 700 as well. So if you already have a 9, it's already too big to make it one more. you got to make the number next to it one more. Then everything after it is a 0. Okay, let me show you that again. I underline my 10's place. The number after it is more than 5. It's 5 or greater. It's 6. So I make this a 1 more. But since it's already a 9, I have to make this one 1 more. So it's 7. And then put two zeros after it. Okay. Now we got to pay attention. This one says round to the nearest 100. Okay. Now, last time I, I, was, I kept underlining the, 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 the second one, the number in the tens place. But this time it says 100. Okay? And it says right here, step number one, underline the digit we are rounding. If we're rounding to the nearest 100, I have to underline the 100. And then I'm going to look at the number next to it. Okay? Look at the number directly after the underline. Well, it's a 9. 9 is 6, 7, 8, 9, or, 10, or 5, 6, 7, or 9. It's, more, it's greater than 5. So then I take the number in the underline and I make it one more. And then what does this last step down here say? Everything after the underline becomes a 0. Okay. Round to the nearest 100. I'm going to underline the number in the hundreds place, the ones, tens, hundreds place. Then I'm going to look at the number directly after the underline. Well, this time, 3 is smaller or less than 5. It falls right in this step. It's, it's either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So I'm going to keep this underline number the same, and everything after it becomes a 0. I have two numbers after the underline. So I'm going to make those two numbers a zero. So two numbers up here, I have two zeros down here. Okay. Now I have numbers in the thousands place, but guess what? I'm going to do the same steps. Round to the nearest hundred, I have to underline the number in my hundreds place. One, ten, hundred. Okay, then I'm going to look at the number after the underline. And remember, everything before the underline, I'm going to keep the same. So my one's right there. Now, 3 is less than 5. Okay? It's smaller than 5. So I'm going to keep my number that's underlined the same. And everything after the underline, these two numbers are going to become zeros. So 1,439 round to the nearest 100 is 1,400. I did the same steps. No matter how many numbers I have out here, I just did the same steps. 
Now this time, look, I have numbers all the way up to the hundred thousands, but it doesn't make a difference. I'm still going to do my same steps over here. I'm going to underline the digit we are rounding. In this case, it says round to the nearest hundred. So I'm going to go over to the ones, tens, hundreds place and round and underline it. Then step two, I'm going to look at the number directly after the underline. In this case, it's right here. It's another four. And since that number is less than five, it's either zero, one, two, three, or four. It's less than five. It's not five or more. It's not a high five. It's less than four. I am going to keep the underlined number the same. And remember, everything before the underline is going to stay the same too. So three, two, two. Then the underline number is going to stay the same. And then everything after the underline becomes zero. I have two numbers after the underline. They are zero. Okay. So I just look at these steps. No matter how big or small the number is, I look at these steps. And that tells me how I'm going to round my numbers. I could use these same steps if I were rounding to the nearest thousand, the nearest ten thousand, or the nearest hundred thousand. But for right now, we're just going to worry about rounding to the nearest 10 and the nearest 100.